So welcome to all of you. We're so happy to have you with us, whether you're joining this broadcast live or viewing this at a later date. We're really glad to have you here. Uh, my name is Naomi Hoffer. I'm the program manager for the Sherry Sobrato Brisson Brain Cancer Survivorship Program. And this webinar is part of our monthly Living Well with Brain Cancer webinar series that we do, which is also part of our growing survivorship program that we have at the UCSF Neuro-Oncology Department. And the mission is to enhance the wellness and quality of life of patients with brain tumors through a collaborative, multidimensional approach focusing on emotional, physical, and cognitive health. And also part of the team here in the Zoom background is our survivorship nurse practitioner, Alexa Greenstein, and our supportive care outreach liaison, Mary Destry. And you might be seeing messages in the chat box or the Q&A from both Alexa and Mary during this presentation. So this is our first webinar in 2022, and we're so happy to be starting off with something concrete that we can all do to support our cognitive, physical, and emotional health throughout the rest of the year. And that's with the practice of yoga and meditation. So we'll be discussing uh, what exactly we mean by yoga and meditation and the adaptive forms that they may take. We'll also learn about the many benefits of these practices as noted in literature, as well as from the findings of the Love Your Brain program. You'll get resources and tips to safely begin your own practice. And then we'll hear directly from one of our amazing thrivers, Kat, who will share how yoga has benefited her and changed since her diagnosis. You'll have a chance to ask our panelists questions using the Q&A function that I mentioned earlier. And finally, we hope to meet you face to face as we are led through a yoga and meditation experiential, experiential session with Marie in our unrecorded after the show segment. So I'm thrilled to have our amazing guests with us here today to help us explore and understand this practice of yoga and meditation. I'm going to introduce our first speaker today, and that is our wonderful Michelle Diaz Nelson. Michelle is a nurse practitioner and is the Neurotrauma Outcomes Coordinator at Zuckerberg San Francisco General in the Department of Neurosurgery. In this role, she provides outpatient follow up care to adults with traumatic brain injury of all severities. Over the years, working with adults with traumatic brain injury and their caregivers, Michelle recognized the need for accessible, affordable wellness programs to improve quality of life. In 2019, she initiated and developed yoga and meditation program for patients and families with brain injury as a clinical affiliate with the nonprofit organization Love Your Brain. She completed a Love Your Brain training for, our, for our healthcare professionals and learned how to integrate yoga based tools into clinical practice. Over the years, Michelle has seen firsthand how yoga and meditation can be used to transform the well-being of brain injury survivors by improving their ability to strengthen and reconnect to their mind and body. So, Michelle, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here today, and I will now turn it over to you. Great, thank you so much, Naomi. I'm so honored to be here today with each and every one of you, and I look forward to meeting some of you face to face um, during the experiential community yoga practice with led by Murray. So before we get started and before I begin my presentation, I will guide you through a meditation to mindfully explore and calm your body and mind. So feel free to sit upright, um, in your chair or whatever position you're in. You can close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Or you can lower or shorten your gaze to calm your mind. I invite you when you take your next breath to simply be more conscious and bring attention into your body. Allow your breath to bring you into the present moment right here, right now. Breathing in through your nose, exhaling out through your mouth. Take a couple breaths on your own. Inhaling cool air to nurture yourself and bring in oxygen to all the cells in your body. Exhaling warm air to expel any tension and negative emotions. Feel your feet connecting you to the floor and the earth, noticing your body in the seated position, 
feeling the weight of your body on the chair, noticing any sensations, vibrations, pressure, heat, or coolness. Gently correct your posture by slowly lifting up your chin until the top of your head radiates towards the sky. Relax your shoulders down like ice melting in a hot spring and feel your neck grow long. Relax your forehead, your eyes, your jaw, your ears, and relax the muscles at the back of your neck. Notice your breath and allow it to bring you into this present moment where you are safe, relaxed, and doing something positive for yourself. When thoughts arise in your mind, can you notice them and let them pass? Your thoughts are just like clouds in the sky. Sometimes many, sometimes few, sometimes stormy, sometimes calm. But what always is behind them lies a calm, open sky. Acknowledge your thoughts and let them go like leaves floating in a mountain stream bringing your attention back to your breath. Disengaging from the past and the future. Enjoying this present moment to do its fullest. Take a couple deep breaths on your own. Engaging and cultivating inner peace and calmness. Cultivating a safe place in your heart filled with love and light. Take a couple more deep breaths on your own, inhaling through your nose, exhaling out through your mouth. And when you're ready, feel free to open your eyes and bring your awareness back to this presentation. Great, thank you so much. So hopefully you've had a minute to, to finish your uh, meditation experience and um, to be able to be fully present today while we um, talk about yoga and meditation for people with brain tumors. Again, it's my honor to be here today and share um, just all of the wealth and knowledge that I have learned over the years um, working with survivors and caregivers and the benefits of yoga and meditation um, improving quality of life. So today I will define yoga, um, what adaptive or accessible yoga is, and meditation. I will discuss the healing benefits of yoga and meditation. Then I will share participant feasibility and acceptability results from the Love Your Brain Yoga and Meditation Program at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. I will share resources and next steps and safety considerations um, when participating in yoga. So what is yoga? Yoga is a physical, mental, and spiritual practice that originated in ancient India thousands of years ago. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root yuj, meaning to unite. This practice aims to create a union between the body, mind, and spirit, and the individual self and universal, universal consciousness, which allows you to neutralize ego-driven thoughts and behaviors, creating a sense of spiritual awakening of self-observation, cultivate discernment, aware, awareness, and self-regulation. Bringing together body, mind, and breath as a means of altering energy. There are many different interpretations and styles that have been developed over the 5,000 years that yoga has, has been around. And so I'll talk about very specifically today, um, the adaptive type of yoga. And ultimately the goal of yoga is to achieve liberation from suffering. 
So these are the four basic principles that underlie the teachings and practices of yoga healing system, which is very relevant to brain cancer. So thinking of yoga as, um, and the healing effects of yoga as a um, holistic entity comprised of various interrelated dimensions inseparable from one another and the help for illness of any one dimension affects the other dimension. So individuals and their needs are unique and must be approached in a way that acknowledges the individuality, which I'll talk more about adaptive yoga. Yoga is self-empowering and the student is their own healer. So yoga engages the student in the healing process by playing an active role in their personalized journey towards health, giving a sense of autonomy. The quality and state of an individual's mind is crucial to healing. So positive mind state, maybe um, healing happens quicker. And if you're in a negative state of mind, then there might be more blockage for healing to occur. So individuals with brain cancer have unique needs. And so how do you approach yoga in a way that acknowledges your individuality and is accessible to you? So that's where the terms adapted or accessible yoga, um, I'm not sure if any of you heard, from, heard about it, but and it essentially is making yoga accessible for everybody. So it's an umbrella term that can include yoga for specific medical conditions like brain cancer and various physical disabilities, allowing you to connect your mind, body, and spirit through the practice of the physical postures, which is the asana practice, partnered with the breath, the pranayama, and the meditation, which you will get to experience later in the um, after the show event. So adaptive yoga is a way of making the practice of yoga more accessible to everyone, regardless of shape, mobility, weight, energy level, any physical limitations or illness and cognitive limitations. Because so many variations of yoga exist, accessible yoga is customizable to suit anyone while, benefit, while still benefiting from the physical effects. So what does that look like? What does accessibility look like um, when experiencing accessible yoga? So it considers all bodies and ability, abilities. It provides simple poses, gentle movement, tailored postures with modifications for all. And you can see in the images here where yoga is, you know, this is an example of, um, you know, adaptive yoga, which, looks very different than what you might see in some of these um, mainstream yoga pictures. So sitting, um, doing yoga in a chair and, or laying down. Um, uh, focusing on proprioception and interoception over alignment, just understanding where your body is in space and experiencing those slow mindful movements to engage in how your body's feeling ensuring that you're doing, um, experiencing slow, safe transitions and participating in yoga classes or one-on-one -on -one yoga with trained staff who is aware of your limitations, as well as using tools like blocks and chairs, blankets or bolsters. So yoga connects the mind, body, and spirit through the practice of physical postures with breath and meditation. So what is meditation? So we did experience um, a brief meditation today, and it's the umbrella term that covers a wide array of contemplative practices, many of which are drawn from the Buddhist traditions. It's a mental exercise that involves relaxation, focus, and awareness. And it's really the process of learning how to pay attention. Training the attention and awareness to achieve a mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable state. It asks us to suspend judgment and allow our natural curiosity, which can lead us to warmth and kindness to ourselves and others. It is to the mind what physical exercise is to the body. 
It's a meditation about, meditation is about exploring and not arriving to a fixed destination. You don't become free of your thoughts, utterly undistracted, but instead you notice what's coming up for you and acknowledge it and let it pass. So when we're meditating, we venture into the workings of our minds, our sensations. What are we feeling? The vibration, our emotions and our thoughts, worries, anger, frustration. Meditation is practiced in one of three modes. So you can um, have concentration, focusing attention on a single object, internal or external, by observation. So paying attention to whatever is predominant in your experience in the present moment without allowing the attention to get stuck on any particular thing. With awareness, allowing awareness to remain present, undistracted, and not engage with either focusing or observing. And so there are various characteristics of meditation. So I've included some photos that just highlight that meditation um, is an individual practice, but it can be done in groups, just like we did today. Um, it's often done with your eyes closed, but not always. And, you know, we do know that some um, patients with brain injury or brain cancer, closing their eyes um, provokes symptoms. And so you don't always need to have your eyes closed to get the benefits. And meditation usually involves body stillness. However, there's other ways to integrate mindfulness meditation into other activities. So maybe mindful walking, um, taking in nature, noticing your breath as you walk. Um, another example is every time you wash your hands, you might just be aware of the sensations and the senses of that um, of just simply washing your hands in that moment. So I like to talk about this analogy of imagining your mind as a snow globe. So during the day, it gets shaken up, flecks of the snow swirl around in many directions, making it cloudy. When the globe stops moving, the snow uh, slowly drifts to the bottom, settling so it becomes clear. This is what happens during meditation. When we slow down, you can tune into your breath, watch your thoughts slowly, settling, creating a clear, calmer mind. So what are some of the healing and, medit the healing and meditation benefits? So we know that yoga, um, yoga and meditation has many healing benefits physiologically and structurally. So it can improve attention, skills, and focus, increasing the thickness of the prefrontal cortex in the brain. We know that it can reduce stress by shrinking the amygdala, promoting um, reducing mental fatigue and promoting stress reduction. We know that it can augment memory by changing structures associate, associated with memory, such as the hippocampus. And studies have shown that yoga and meditation can decrease the secretion of cortisol, which is the primary stress hormone. So all of this is um, you know, making structural changes to the brain and creating new pathways, which is also known as neuroplasticity. So we have over 86 billion neurons in our brain. And earlier researchers um, thought it was to believe that once we were born, that was all of the neurons that we would ever have. And it wasn't until recently we, we know that that's not true. So research has shown that um, you can continue to change your brain. And that's exactly what neuroplasticity is, is the ability to change the brain throughout life the ability of the nervous system to respond to internal and external stimuli by reorganizing its structure, function, and connections, by exercising persistent and consistent attention, we can develop new pathways in the brain. And you can experience that um, in yoga and meditation where you're constantly bringing your attention back to 
to um, your body, to your mind, in the movement or the breath. The brain, like muscles in the body, can be strengthened and weakened depending on how it's used. And we have the power to change how our brain operates, how efficiently it works, and the skills that it, that it can acquire. And the mind is built from experiences you have. So the changes moment to moment, hour to hour, and day to day. There are two types of um, brain plasticity. So there's the functional plasticity, which is the brain's ability to move functions from a damaged area of the brain to other undamaged areas. And there's structural plasticity, which is the brain's ability to change in its physical structure as a result of learning. And just like anything, um, it does have some limitations. Unfortunately, it's not like our brains are not like Plato. We can't recreate them um, exactly how we would like to be, especially after brain cancer. But there is hope in knowing that you can um, continue moment to moment to um, change the pathways and build those neurons in your brain. And yoga and meditation helps to do that. So what facilitates neuroplasticity? So building memory patterns through repetition, um, emotional arousal, reducing stress and how to respond to stress, engaging in intention, attention and awareness via yoga and meditation, learning new activities, learning new instruments, exercise, so studies show that regular physical activity has been shown to have a number of brain benefits, um, preventing neuron loss in the hippocampus. Um, rest just as much as it's important to exercise and move your body, rest is also important. Traveling and exploring new places, creating art and other creative pursuits, as well as reading. So the literature suggests that there are um, many benefits of yoga and meditation for um, the different domains in, as, from a holistic approach. So cognitively helps with self-regulation, improving attention skills, promoting stress reduction, improving memory. And our mind is pulled in different directions. Um, it can be hard to focus. And so yoga and meditation can, can help with that. There's the physical benefits, um, enhancing muscular strength, improving respiratory and cardi cardiac function, building flexibility, reducing pain, or um, reshaping our relationship with pain, improving sleep, improving the parasympathetic nervous system. So yoga and meditation, even just doing three or four rounds of deep breathing can um, lower your heart rate and activate the parasympathetic nervous system, can boost the immune system, uh, fight disease and heal, as well as reduce inflammation. Um, it behaviorally can improve mood, um, reducing the brain chatter in our, in our voices in our head that really won't leave us alone sometimes. Reduce stress, anxiety, depression, fatigue, fear, anger, grief. And it doesn't mean that you don't have those feelings or that you're not allowed to feel that. It's just having kind of boundaries with them and acknowledging them. Also promoting recovery and treatment, recovery from treatment and addiction. Can also help improve your self-confidence and body image, um, interpersonal relationships enhance community integration, your overall well-being and quality of life. It helps connect yourself to yourself and to others. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about the community-based um, traumatic brain injury yoga program at ZSFG, which was established in 2019 in collaboration with the Love Your Brain organization. So the Department of Neurosurgery became clinical affiliates with the Love Your Brain organization. And as Naomi had mentioned, um, 
you know, in, in my clinical work with patients, it was very obvious that we needed more wellness resources to improve quality of life after brain injury um, for patients and caregivers. So we trained multidisciplinary clinical staff to facilitate yoga, mindfulness, and psychotherapy. It was a program initially to be done in person at the wellness center, but because of COVID-19, we had to switch the entire program to a virtual platform, all on Zoom. And so we continue to offer a free ongoing six-week yoga and psychoeducation program in Spanish and English. So I'm just going to share um, you know, what the program entails, and you'll get to experience um, a, a shorter version of, of, the, of the yoga program um, when Marie leads our yoga practice later. So it's a 75 minute program via Zoom. There's five minutes of breathing exercises, which enhance the nervous system and um, attention and control. There's a gentle yoga practice to improve flexibility and balance, guided meditation. And the class ends with the psychoeducation discussion to build connection and um, resilience. So in order to uh, participate you, the, in the pilot series, you had to be a TBI or stroke survivor or caregiver, 18 or older, participate between June 2020 to July 2021, and have not been told to avoid gentle exercise. So this, all of the, the um, online series were adapted to a virtual program via Zoom. And we evaluated the program by um, conducting self-reported pre and post quantitative and qualitative feedback, um, specifically looking at feasibility and acceptability of the program. So we had 35 participants, um, 21 with traumatic brain injury and nine with stroke. We included caregivers as well. So we had five caregivers um, who were all caregivers of TBI survivors. The time since the injury was predominantly one to five years, which, um, and many of them, 86 and 89% continued to have ongoing symptoms from injury. And also we had a, a large percent of, of our patients um, continued to use assistive devices which just shows that you know, they were still able to participate in the adaptive yoga. So we, um, the feasibility results, we were able to, to conduct five six week series and all, all of them were, were completed, which means that we did have participants sign up for each of the sessions. We had 46 participants who registered and they were all eligible. There are approximately 10 participants in each session, ranging from five to 16 participants per class. 76 of the participants attended at least one session and 66 um, completed the series, which was defined as attending at least four of the six sessions. Oops. Oh. Sorry about that. We had 52% um, of TBI participants sign up for multiple series. And also all of the caregivers um, who participated had participated in all five of the series and also completed all of the series. For acceptability, their participant satisfaction was high. So 9.16 out of 10. Um, all of the participants who completed the, the, the um, series would participate again. And then the reasons for not or completing the series um, are listed below. So scheduling conflicts, a um, couple of participants felt like the yoga was too easy and um, they were referred to the Love Your Brain organization, which I'll share these resources with you in just a few minutes. So we asked all of our participants how the yoga and meditation series added value to your care and recovery. And the key themes um, that emerged were, um, you know, adding value to their physical health, mental health, resilience, community, ease of participation, and feeling supported by the, the trained and professional staff. 
I just thought I would share some, some quotes um, from the participants and, and how this adapted yoga was and meditation was um, beneficial to their care and recovery. So many of these quotes you might be able to relate to in terms of feeling that you can't participate in conventional yoga um, due to any sort of limitations so one of the quotes, um, I've never been able to participate in a conventional yoga class because of my brain injury interfered with my balance and processing speed. I learned ways to move while respecting my injury. It helped me to focus and relax when I feel my anxiety level increases. I learned how to implement helpful stretches on days when I was afflicted with symptoms to make sure I got some movement instead of succumbing to the darkness. It taught me to be patient with myself and give me useful skills, to, tools to help and help with focus and believe it helped my calmness. And then lastly, I was not successful at doing regular yoga and the Love Your Brain yoga sessions allowed me to discover ways to still be active and feel free. So where, where do you start? How can you get engaged in an adaptive yoga and meditation program? So I would say to first and foremost, make sure that you check with your medical provider providers and receive medical clearance before beginning any yoga practice. Start by um, starting at your own capacity and understanding what that means to you. So that might be using props, moving slowly, um, participate in gentle adaptive yoga classes. And if you are participating in a class setting, making sure to ask the instructor to make any adaptions as needed for you. For meditation, it can seem like, you know, that's kind of a lot to ask to do, to kind of start this new sort of practice, especially if it's, if it's kind of foreign to you. So even before starting to do meditation, I know for myself, um, it took me years to get there and, you know, just starting with exploring what it is, learning more about it. What are the benefits? What it looks like? You know, there are, va there are various types of meditations. Um, be patient with yourself. There's no right or wrong way to do it. As I mentioned before, you can meditate, you know, individually on your own. Um, you can be walking, you could be on the bus, you could be driving to a medical appointment. Um, you know, when you're feeling really unsure and scared, you can just take a couple deep breaths and just know that that's helping, um, you know, promote the parasympathetic nervous system, which is gonna, um, which has benefits for um, reducing anxiety, stress. You can make it a habit and start really small. So um, for somebody who's never experienced meditation, that might look like every time you brush your teeth, just be mindful of the senses, mindful of your thoughts, take a couple breaths. And then over time, you can investigate how you're feeling. Also using free resources to, to try different types of meditation. You can engage your family and friends and also join local or national meditation groups. So contraindications and safety precautions. So there are no absolute contraindications. Um, everyone's unique and everyone's experience um, of heal and healing process is unique. So that would be a conversation to have with your medical providers and yourself to know what your limitations are, what level of activity you're, you're um, engaging in just regularly. Um, making sure that you receive medical clearance before beginning any sort of yoga practice, making sure that you're avoiding any movement that compresses or hyperextends, um, deeply twisting the neck, any sort of inversions that might put strain on your head and neck and can cause change in blood pressure. And of course, making sure that you practice in a safe environment using adaptive poses and props. 
And last but not least, I wanted to share some resources. You might be wondering how can you engage in um, adaptive yoga or mindfulness exercises and meditation. So this um, resource list we, you'll definitely have available, but there's some local and national organizations. So UCSF Health has free meditations in, in all languages and of different time lengths. The Love Your Brain organization has their own yoga and meditation program that you are able to sign up for and do on your own time. They also have free yoga classes that you can um, have access to as well in the link below. The Independent Living Resource Center is local and is a um, resource for people with disabilities and they have um, movement meditation for energy and healing weekly as well as virtual chair yoga class that's free if you're interested you can contact Brianna contact information is there there's also the American brain excuse me the American brain tumor association they have tumor support groups and group discussions as well as the national brain tumor society they have a free meditation class on on Mondays and there's also um, recordings available that you could have access to for free. And um, Brain and Life Organization. Also, um, Kat, who is you'll be hearing from later, has her own uh, meditation classes that she teaches, as well as online um, yoga. Um, and Yoga with Adrian is um, on YouTube. She's a great resource. She offers all kinds of different types of yoga and the link that I, I included here is um, a, a short 10 minute um, chair yoga practice that if you've never experienced yoga, you can start with um, there if you'd like. So thank you. I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Michelle, that, for that really terrific overview of yoga and meditation. Before you leave, um, I wanted to just, there's a couple of questions that I thought maybe you could ask right or answer right now. Um, and that's re regarding the train your, the um, love your brain program. Um, can, is brain tumor considered a TBI? And could they sign up for the love your brain program if they have a brain cancer? Yes, so the Love Your Brain organization is available to you and you can sign up for the ongoing yoga sessions. Um, the link that I provided, you can even um, just go to Love Your Brain Yoga. I think Mary just typed in um, some resources and brain tumor is, is considered, a, um, is not considered traumatic brain injury. So traumatic brain injury occurs via any sort of assault or um, force to the brain but it is considered, um, brain tumors are considered you know, to be an acquired injury um, by, by a tumor. So it, um, it's in the space of brain injury and this program is started specifically for traumatic brain injury. One of the, um, the organization was, was started by the, um, the family of, of a um, professional skier who was an Olympic skier and was injured and he um, experienced a traumatic brain injury. And so um, they are starting to offer their program and, and expand. And so we at San Francisco General did expand the program to stroke patients and are looking um, to, to increase the participation to all sorts of, of brain injuries. Okay. Great, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. For those of you who have more questions for Michelle, we're gonna invite her back um, at the later part of this presentation, this webinar, and um, we'll uh, invite you back on, but please submit your questions in the Q&A box. And thank you so much, Michelle. And now um, I, it's my pleasure to introduce someone I know and love, <laughs> Kat Schatz. In addition to serving as an incredible source of support to others in our peer support program, Kat is a marriage and family therapist and yoga teacher. She has a longtime passion for helping others find meaning and purpose in their lives. She believes in a holistic approach to wellness through mind, body, and spirit, and incorporates breathwork, movement, and energy techniques to help clients connect to deeper parts of themselves. 
Her philosophy is that people have a limitless potential to grow and heal. I love that. She is constantly inspired by witnessing others work through their challenges and transform their lives. This healing work is a courageous journey to the self and she is honored to walk this path with her clients. Kat, thank you so much for being here with us today. I wanna to invite you on if you could turn on your video. Thank you, it's so great to see you. Hi. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Great to see you again. Um, so Kat, I think I'd love to just uh, start off by asking you if you could let us know about your yoga practice and kind of maybe before and after your diagnosis and, and also maybe ways it's changed. Yes, um, I'd love to. And it was really wonderful to hear everything that Michelle said. Um, so my yoga practice, I started when I was in college and I fell in love with yoga then. And I kind of wove in and out of my life through the years. And then finally, probably around 20, I don't know, 2005 or so, I decided that I wanted to make it more important part of my life. And so that's when I really connected with yoga and found a really good teacher that I enjoyed and really made it um, part of my life. So I, I was... Um, Take, going to classes all the time. And then I wanted to take it a little bit further. So I did a teacher training and then another teacher training. So I did the 500 hour teacher training that you can do. And, and I started teaching yoga and it's just always been so close to my heart. I've always loved doing it and being in community with other people. And I love all the philosophy behind it that teaches us how to live our life in an open hearted way. Um, and so yeah, yoga has just been part of my life and I love sharing that with my family and with my friends and and watching how people get to know their bodies and get to know themselves on a deeper level when they practice. Thank you so much. And had it changed at all for you, the practice of it? Do you do it differently now after a diagnosis than you did before? Was it for sure, yeah. So, you know, when I first started, I was a lot younger too. Too. And so I really liked um, vinyasa yoga, where you're flowing through sun salutations a lot. And it was really physical, holding poses and handstands. I loved all of that. Um, and then once I, I was diagnosed, you know, doing headstands, that sort of thing, I wanted to back off from. And I have just found more of a gentle yoga. You know, that's kind of a half a yoga that is on, more on the gentle side. And I think with getting older too, that it just nourishes my body in a different way. It's not that sweaty yoga, which is, can be really fun too, but I, I love being able to come to my mat and, and just be easeful in my body. It helps me relax a little bit more and it helps stretch my muscles and ligaments and all of that um, more than like a fast paced yoga. So it's really changed in that direction for me. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then if you could talk a little bit more about any changes or benefits that you've experienced as a result of your yoga practice and kind of, yeah, what keeps motivating you to continue to uh, incorporate this practice in your life? Right. Well, you know, it can be really hard to have your home practice and to, to commit to doing that every day. And one of the things that I like to do is to have my journal there next to my mat and I'll set up with blocks on my mat this one pose that I love to do where you can kind of get this mini back bend this kind of upper chest um, opening and so I have my block set up there and I know that that's one of my favorite poses to do and you can just lay down and do this pose and it just feels so good so I see that and sometimes I'll even write a note to myself you know to like in my journal so when I come down to my uh, mat, I can, oh yeah, I have this note, like have a great day today, or, you know, enjoy your practice or something. And, and it's nice to be able to have that welcoming part um, to come back to my mat. I think another way that it's changed is, um, you know, going through any type of cancer, there's the anxiety that happens, um, when you have to go for a test or an MRI or a CAT scan or something, and you're always worried, is this cancer coming back? And so 
it's really helped me with that, you know, especially breath work. It, it has helped me learn how to calm myself down, calm my mind and my body. And when I sit still and practice pranayama, which is breath work and, um, and sit in meditation, I just noticed that a lot of that melts off of me. A lot of that anxiety um, can melt off and I can just come into the present moment, which is really what we all have, right? We don't know what's going to happen later or in the future. And so it's, it's a beautiful reminder for me to just be present and know that I'm just walking down this path and I don't know what's going to happen later, but right now I'm okay. And that's been really helpful. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning the anxiety. And I, I was wondering, you know, there might be people listening that might be feeling like um, I feel betrayed by my body uh, because of this cancer and this diagnosis. And I don't really know if I want to connect with my body. I kind of want to just like, think of anything else besides my body. Do you have any kind of thoughts of responding to that or how, you know, what might you say? To sure. I can totally understand that. Yeah, I can definitely understand this sense of like, you know, why did this happen to me, right? I think we all have that, um, that going through our minds when we're first diagnosed with any kind of cancer. And, um, you know, yoga has taught me that, you know, well, why not me? I'm not any better or worse than anyone else. And so it's just something that we go through. And, um, and I've heard yogis say, like, um, you know, our bodies are meant to get old and our bodies are meant to break down. And so I never had that why me question, you know, because I just figured, well, you know, some people get this and some people don't, you know, there's other things I didn't get. But, um, but yeah, so I just think that, um, I know, I'm sorry, I forgot the rest of the question. No, that's great. I love, I, that's totally fine. Um, I love the compassion that you're bringing in. It sounds like, you know, the response that you're having with your body is, is one of compassion. Right. And I think that's so important, right? To, I mean, I really learned, I thought I kind of knew my body a little bit, but before cancer, but afterwards, I feel like I've really learned how to connect with my body and to embody a lot of, um, what I like to call these high vibration feelings like peace and compassion and love and kindness and, and a lot of um, energies that just make me happy. You know, I like to just bring like one hand to my heart and one hand to my belly every night when I go to bed and just run through my day and just be grateful for that. Everything that I got to experience, you know, thanking the universe for me being alive today. And I try to do that in the mornings too. Like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have an open heart all day today. And it really has made a big shift. And I feel like I've gotten to know myself in ways that I never knew before. So even though it's a difficult thing going through brain cancer, and I wouldn't wish it for anyone, I feel like I've gotten to know myself on a deeper level, which, which just makes me feel um, like I'm living more fully right now. And yeah. I think meditation yeah. and yoga were a huge part of that. Yeah, thank you. Do you feel like um, the, in any way the diagnosis has kind of um, made you double down on your self-care practices in a way? Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, I used to eat tons of sugar and then, you know, I eat a little bit now, but, you know, right afterwards I was like, well, I could eat this or I could die, <laughs> right? And so it really helped me um, trying to get back into have a really healthy body, you know, really be careful what I put into it. And I think the yoga medita meditation, you know, you always hear your body is your temple. And so I've really brought that into my life a lot more. And so every day I'm making smoothies and juices and eating well and exercising and and just finding stillness in our bodies. You know, when we find that stillness, um, then we can really connect with ourselves, which we don't do a lot of times. We're so busy in our life. And when we sit with ourselves for a little bit, then we can kind of make it through anything because we have this wisdom that rises up and this strength that comes up. And we know that we can we can make it through anything. And that's that's what it feels like for me when I just stop and be still. Yeah. 
Thank you. That's a beautiful answer. Um, and also maybe a, a practical question. Do you um, find doing it, yoga and meditation in the morning or later in the day? Does it does timing matter or sequence? Are you, you know, with, with meditation and yoga practices, like do you do it together or space it out? Any tips on that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I don't have like an hour and a half meditation practice or anything. So what I'll do usually is I'll get up in the morning and I'll just look out. I have out my window like this beautiful birch tree. And so I look at a certain spot on this birch tree and just every morning I find my gaze going to that one spot. And it's really miraculous almost to see it, how it changes through the different seasons. And I just you know, take a few breaths and I'm happy that, that I'm alive today. And I, it really helps looking at that one tree. It connects me to nature and it also has a um, sense of focus to it because I'm doing that. And it only takes like 30 seconds. And so I have lots of little things that I do that bring me into the present moment throughout the day. You know, I have an altar and I might look at a crystal on it or um, a plant that's, you know, in my room and just notice the beauty of it and how, you know, how lucky I am to see that. And, um, and then I think, you know, meditating in the morning is a great way to start the day, even if it's just sitting for a minute to start with or two minutes, you know, and just breathing and getting still, it really sets you up for success for the rest of the day. And it helps release some fear um, if you're going through that. And, and again, it finds that stillness, which is kind of the sacredness within us all. Yeah. Thank you. I, I love how you have um, kind of objects throughout your house and outside your window, like things to to remind you to kind of come back to return to yourself and also to that place of gratitude that you feel for for life in your life. I, I love that you, you know, have that around you. You've, you've built that into your environment. Well, it's a great reminder because it's easy yeah. to forget. It's easy to get caught up in the stress of things and, oh, I got to get this done or I have to do this for someone else. And then when I look around, it's like, oh, well, I can, I can still do that and help other people, but I can also take care of myself because that's, I think, one of the most important things when we're going through something like, like this, to be able to set some boundaries and take care of ourselves first and then be able to help others. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And along that line, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the community aspect to yoga. And I know, so it's kind of a double question. One is, um, what, what do you see as the um, benefit of kind of doing yoga in community versus by yourself? Um, and then how, is, how has COVID changed your practice? Because I know that's... Right. Yeah. I know COVID's changed everything. So yeah. Um, yeah, you know, in yoga, we call community sangha. And it's, it's so beautiful. Even like when I had my brain surgery, afterwards, right when I broke, woke up, after the brain surgery, I imagined I was teaching a yoga class and I said, it was the end of the class. And I said, okay, everyone push back to downward facing dog. And then I woke up from my brain surgery and it just was this um, sense of community, you know, being all together in this room where everyone has their heart open and um, that energy it just runs through every single person. We, everyone feels connected and one thing that we're all sharing together. And I find that that community goes, um, is really helpful to have, you know, I think it's important in healing to have a community, just like the thrivers group that you offer. We've created this beautiful community there and everyone is so helpful and loving to each other. Um, I think we can't have enough of that in our life. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, yeah, I love, I, I feel what you're saying. It's like, it's kind of when, when people's heart is open and their intention is there for, for healing and love, it's like, it kind of builds on each other when there's more people in the room and people are doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And let's see, is, um, let's see, I wanted to just ask another question here around if, if you had any advice for someone who is just new to the whole idea of even incorporating yoga and meditation after cancer, um, what any advice to just kind of get started? Right. Yeah, I think, you know, finding 
a teacher that understands and can, you know, do a gentle yoga program to start with at least. And, um, and being able to just be mindful of your body as you're moving through it. You know, if something hurts, then you back off. Yoga isn't like other, you know, like bodybuilding or something where, you know, no pain, no gain. If you have pain, we want you to back off of it and not do yoga um, or at least find adaptations for it, you know, modify the poses. And um, I just think it's a beautiful way to get to know yourself on a deeper level, get to be connected to your body and have your mind kind of settle down into your heart more and not be, um, not be so unfocused. You know, it really helps you just be aligned with who you truly are. Yeah. So I would encourage anyone to take a few steps, you know, try something new if you haven't tried it before and see how you feel. Give it a couple of times and um, see if you feel differently about your body and see how your body feels. You know, it will start talking to you like, oh, that felt really good. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Um, and then one last question. So we know that you're a yoga instructor um, and yoga and meditation instructor. How could people join your class? Or uh, I know Michelle mentioned it briefly, but how could people find you? Right. So um, I'm working on a website, but right now I'm, you can find me on Instagram at Lotus Yogi. And I post up a lot of the different classes that I have, or um, you could DM me there and send me your email and I can send you emails out um, about different classes and offerings and so I have a yoga class online right now that I'm offering and um, a meditation class for people living with cancer. That's a free class on Friday mornings and, and retreats and lots of fun day long retreats or weekend retreats. Great. Good. I see that Mary has posted um, in the chat. Yeah, thank you. So thank you, Mary, for doing that. Um, yeah. It looks like we have a lot of, uh, some questions coming up. So thank you so much for just your honesty and your openness and just your inspiration. I just feel, um, I feel personally inspired just by hearing you talk about it in your life. And you're, you're kind of, to me, because I know you, you're kind of like a, a living example of, of why I would want to incorporate it into my life. Um, you know, so admire you. So thank you so much. Thanks for having so, me on. Yeah, thank you. And um, Michelle, if you don't mind coming back on, and for those of you who are interested in asking some questions, um, Kat, maybe you could stay here too, <laughs> and we could just open it up to questions uh, for anybody who wants to submit using the Q&A. Um, there are a couple of questions. One that came through the chat, actually, do you have any um, recommended meditation apps, any apps that you use, or you might think that would be good for others just to use? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kat, maybe you can answer. Um, sure. Yeah. I like Insight Timer. It's a free app and they have so many amazing meditation instructors there. And there's um, actually one that I use all the time where her name is Nicole Bayless on there and she has a healing meditation. It's about 15 minutes long. And I, I listen to that every day. And it's just is such a a powerful thing because she has some beautiful affirmations about every cell in your body being healthy and well. And so I think that's a great one to check out. Great. Hi, Marie. Thank you for joining us. Hi. I, I, it was beautiful, really beautiful, Kat, to hear your story. Um, as a yoga and meditation teacher, a few other apps that I, I also use Insight Timer. It's my favorite one. Um, but some other ones that I you could try are Calm, C-A-L-M. There's a free addition to that in a paid version. Um, Deepak Chopra has a beautiful meditative site that there's a lot of uh, free meditations and he does some with um, Deepak Chopra and Oprah Winfrey. Um, he will do um, various meditations on themes. Uh, I think the one they are doing more recently was lightening up and so it's all about the new year and how you lighten up but there's also various ones that are health related. related. Um, so those are some other ones that I think are very lovely to to try. Um, it's, it's just some other examples. Thank you. And I see that Mary is so quick at putting things in the chat here. <laughs> so she, you're getting some links to some of these apps. 
Wonderful. And websites. Great. Okay. Um, and I'll see. And please um, submit any other questions that you might have for our wonderful panelists. I realize we have not yet introduced. Maria is going to be leading us um, in the after the show. And I might want to just give, say a few things about, about you, Marie. And Michelle, do you want to? Sure, yes, I can sure. introduce Marie. It's, it's my honor to introduce Marie. She is one of our amazing yoga instructors um, and she just has a wealth of knowledge. Um, she's been teaching yoga and meditation since 2011 and specializes in working with people who are recovering from many illness, different types of illnesses. She teaches Hatha yoga and restorative yoga as well as one-on-one -on -one yoga therapy sessions where she focuses on stress management, adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue symptoms. She also works with um, various types of clients recovering from surgery, heart disease, cancer, traumatic brain injury, Alzheimer's and arthritis. Um, she, uh, Marie incorporates many dimensions of yoga in her teaching to support healing and wellness, including physical postures, breathing exercises, deep relaxation, meditation, imagery, and visualization work, touch, uh, mantra, and yoga philosophy. Um, in addition to teaching, Marie is a board member um, at the Institute of Yoga, San Francisco, and Accessible Yoga Organization. And so I'm so honored to participate in a yoga um, experiential with, with Marie and each of every one of you today. Yes. Thank you. And I'm glad you're here on this panel, too. So if you want questions as well for Marie, um, we have a few more minutes before we're going to do our experiential, but we're so glad to have you with us. And, um, so another question that has come through is um, about Bikram yoga. I've heard about Bikram yoga. Um, if that's how you pronounce it. Is there any added benefit to doing yoga poses in hot temperatures? Anybody want to answer that? <laughs> Michelle, do you want to start? I can give you a, a clinical answer, <laughs> which is um, I wouldn't recommend it as your kind of first um, approach to yoga. It is 105 degrees and um, it's, it's Bikram Yoga is a 90 minute session and, and it's the sequences are 26 poses that you essentially do in, a, in order. And so there's definitely no adaptation or modifications and um, can, can really be unsafe, if, especially if you have any balance issues or um, you know, just being in that sort of um, hot temperature can, can, can really be unsafe for, for anyone, even without brain cancer. But um, also I just um, wouldn't rec recommend starting there. You know, if, if that's something that you, been doing and, and can have a, have a tolerance to then then possibly but I you know would encourage to to um, start with a healthy yoga or a gentle practice and and Marie I don't know and Kat if you wanted to add anything to the the Bikram yoga um, question um, I've heard that I mean I haven't really done that much hot yoga it just doesn't work for my system um but lots of people love it and lots of people um get really strong and lose a lot of weight and i know that a lot of people um really love that heat and can't get enough of it um but for me it hasn't been one of my favorite i much prefer happy yoga and um and being able to move the body in all directions and not just those several poses that you mentioned, those 26 poses, so. Yeah, I did not realize that you can't really adapt it. You were saying, Michelle, like, that, that wouldn't be a good one to start if you can't adapt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, and it is 90 minutes, um, which personally, I've been doing yoga for many years and I'm, I'm not quite at the 90 minute mark, so <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and that leads to another question, which there are so many different types of yoga classes, which one should I choose? Um, so you mentioned this a little bit, Kat, about you know, finding a good instructor, someone, were you saying somebody who's certified or trained or um, what would they look for? I know the credentials that you have is um, RYT 500. Is that kind of what they're looking for? Right. And you, same with you, Marie. Um, I am also a 500 
RIT 500 certified, but I actually have another certification after that, which is uh, I'm a certified uh, yoga therapist, which is 800 hours or more of training. Um, so I've, yeah, so I have a little more than, than CAT, I think at this time. But there's a clear difference. I would like to clarify the difference between a yoga teacher and a yoga therapist. Um, all, all yoga therapists are also yoga teachers. And when we think about yoga teaching, oftentimes a teacher is going to teach a class and then the class is you follow the class and maybe they'll give you a few items to adapt. They'll say, you can use this block or use this strap to adapt it. Uh, but it still is a class as a sequence and then you're following that along with some adaptions. Yoga therapy comes at it from a very different perspective. It starts with the client. So if a client client has an injury or an illness or a goal, you meet a one-on-one -on -one session first, and then everything that the yoga therapist does is adapted to that. There could be one-on-one -on -one yoga therapy sessions, but there can also be group therapy sessions that are focused on a particular um, piece. For well, maybe I, I've done a class, for example, for people who have had exhaustion, chronic fatigue, or adrenal, and we, we focus on what that population needs. Um, the only other thing I would say about finding a yoga teacher and instructor, um, I do think certification is nice to have. It's not absolute necessary, but it's nice to have. Um, I think it's also nice to find someone who um, is adaptable and adapts and is accessible. That is probably the biggest thing that I have found that when I, when I go to a teacher and a teacher says, no, the class, the arm should be like this, or it has to be like that. I mean, we're, our, our bodies are all different. And so I always encourage people to find someone who can work with you in an adaptable way. Great. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Um, okay. This is an interesting question. You mentioned um, a connection that yoga is, is, is kind of a part of it as a connection to spirit. Uh, and could an agnostic or atheist still get something out of yoga if they don't resonate with the idea of having a spiritual aspect? Anybody want to take that one? Um, I would say yes. Okay. The word that I, I will use at times is awe, A-W-E. So I think we've all had that experience in life where we just are in awe. It might be that you've been out at the ocean and you've seen this remarkable sunset, or perhaps it's been when you've seen a little child giving uh, a hand to another younger child or teaching them how to do it. You may have noticed it sometimes when you've seen an older people, person with their dog and the dog is so happy and familiar with that older person and companion. These are aspects of life that are filled with awe they're bigger and beyond how we can actually even verbally describe them. And when we talk about yoga, connecting the body, mind, and spirit, we're talking about connecting to that sense of awe that is part of the world and the universe. And so I think if you're agnostic or atheist, you still have that understanding of that sense of awe. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to add anything, Michelle or Kat? I love that idea of awe. I think that's a beautiful word to use. Um, uh, I think you don't have to listen, you know, a lot of the words God or um, the universe or that kind of thing. I know it can be hard for some people. And so, you know, I like to kind of talk about heart openness and being able to um, to come into the heart and just know that that is expansive and all encompassing. And it kind of, I think that can be a way for people to connect to themselves and something bigger than themselves, um, rather than thinking of God or a spiritual, something spiritual. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. I think I would just add um, the component of love and just, mm -hmm being in a place of love. And um, I think we've, it's safe to say we've all experienced love in some capacity and just, um, you know, that, that could be somebody's um, spiritualness in a way. You know? And that I think definitely coincides with, with the awe moments. 
Thank you. Beautiful answers. Thank you so much. I know we're, we're getting to the, the end of our um, presentation, and I wanted to just uh, remind all of you that you're invited to stay after the show. Um, before we do that, I have a quick you know follow up slide here. And we invite all of you to stay with us after the show and actually do an experiential with Marie and Kat is going to be there and Michelle is going to be there and I'm going to invite our whole team to stay as well. I'm going to be experiencing it with you. Um, so thank you very much for doing that poll. Um, I'm going to close it now. And thank you, Michelle, Kat, Marie. Thank you so much for, for being here with our, with our community and just really helping us understand and, and kind of get excited about some good practices we can incorporate in our lives to, to make 2022 an amazing year. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us. And um, I'm going to stop the recording now.